Welcome back to another video from PM Problems, the site dedicated to project management, construction management, and workplace topics. If you love that stuff too, be sure to check out our website at solvepmproblems.com for tons of free articles, downloads, and more. Now, let's get into today's topic. Construction projects require a lot of resources. Not only does a construction project need materials, equipment, and workers to build it, but they require planning, contracts, schedules, documents, inspections, and countless other managerial tasks. A contractor in charge of a large project requires a team of people to manage all aspects and phases of the job, from inception to completion. So who are these people? Who manages the job? Let's explore the nine typical roles that make up a construction project team, along with their responsibilities and the level of experience each role requires. C-level positions are in charge of the big picture at a construction company. They think about maintaining a backlog of work, finding new opportunities, maintaining business and client relationships, and managing the company's finances. These executives are involved in a construction project during their most critical moments. This includes bidding on work, big picture budgeting, and executing favorable contracts. C-level positions usually have a minimum of 20 years of experience, but there's always exceptions. Top-level executives receive regular updates on a project's key metrics, but managers in these positions rarely spend more than a day or two in any given month on a particular job. They oversee all projects that the company has, ongoing, upcoming, and prospective. In turn, C-level positions review a project's performance only on a monthly or quarterly basis. The project executive, which is often interchanged with senior project manager, is usually the highest non-C-level position on a project. The people in these roles have worked as a project manager for many years and thus have the experience to monitor all phases of the project, including the big picture. The amount of experience required to become a project executive varies. It's more about how many projects they've overseen in their careers. A project executive or senior PM has likely overseen 5 to 10 good-sized projects before they're seen as senior. In turn, people who occupy these roles typically have 15 to 20 years of experience working in the project manager capacity before ever getting that executive title. Project executives typically oversee two to three projects at any one time. They rely on the project managers to manage the day-to-day -day and instead focus on making sure the higher level stuff comes together, including a healthy client relationship. Typical responsibilities for a project executive include establishing protocols and communication streams, ensuring that high value budgetary items are well executed, tracking major schedule milestones, and complying with overall project requirements. These senior staff members typically spend only one to two days per week on any particular project, so they maintain a big picture perspective. They work with the PMs to make sure the plans are being carried out accordingly. The project manager is in charge of making sure that the day-to-day -day needs of a project are carried out correctly. This may sound simple, but a PM's responsibilities span quite a few areas of the project. PMs collaborate with senior management to plan the short and medium-term goals of the project. Other than these occasional check-ins, PMs co-captain the carrying out of these plans on a daily basis. This includes meeting the schedule, organizing resources, monitoring the budget, billing the client, developing drawings and designs, proper documentation, purchases, approvals, contracts, and coordination between parties. Construction PMs typically have seven to 10 years of experience in the industry. They've worked on every phase of a project at least once, and they've spent time working underneath another PM to learn the trade. The superintendent is like the dance partner of the project manager, and it takes two to tango. This is because the project manager and the superintendent share the same role in a deliverable sense. Manage and oversee the day-to-day -day operation of a construction project and ensure compliance with schedule, budget, and quality requirements. While PMs typically carry out their role from the office, superintendents perform their duties on the job site. Superintendents help develop a schedule, oversee performance and execution, attend meetings, and manage the flow of information, both to the field from the office and from the office to the field, just like PMs. Where the PM's responsibilities end is where the superintendent's role begins. Here are a few responsibilities specific to the construction superintendent. They ensure that the job site is safe and that all work is being performed correctly. They also monitor job site quality requirements. They track daily activities against the project schedule, and they document unknowns and unexpected delays. Superintendents make sure that design details are built properly, and they determine means, methods, and constructability for each phase of work. Superintendents also oversee field work and on-site subcontractors. Much like PMs, superintendents need at least seven to 10 years of experience. Many superintendents have a lot more experience in this though, because they've worked as a tradesperson or foreman already. In turn, they understand the details of construction and have seen many projects play out. This experience is vital for a superintendent. In addition to experience, superintendents must have certain qualifications. These include extensive OSHA safety training, knowledge of building codes, 
and certifications to oversee hazardous activity such as rigging and hoisting. Assistant PMs are essentially project managers in training. They're working towards becoming a PM, but must first learn all of the various responsibilities a PM has, as well as observe the project manager carry out their duties. Assistant PMs have the same responsibility as the project manager, but they carry out a lot of the legwork at the direction of the PM. This includes scheduling, documentation, purchases, price comparisons, billing, and other things like that. The assistant PM usually has two to three years of experience when they're promoted to this position, and they stay in it for another two to five years until they're ready to be the PM. If you've been working in the construction industry for a while, you know there's a lot of paperwork involved. Some projects have so much paperwork that they require a separate person just to deal with it all. That's the project administrator. The administrator is the person in charge of making sure that the flow of all daily activities is smooth in a paperwork sense, but it goes beyond that as well. Typical responsibilities of a project administrator include the tracking of payroll for field crews, setting up and onboarding new tradesmen, maintaining compliance with federal, state, and local requirements, such as taxes, filling out all key project documents, tracking the payment to vendors, subs, and consultants, and in some cases, administrators also handle the exchange of submittals, RFIs, and other key documents too. Project admins usually need at least two to three years of relevant construction experience in order to get hired. This is because they must have unique experience with and know how to prioritize their work in accordance with the construction project's unique needs. The general foreman is usually the highest ranking working position on a job site. And by working position, I mean that they're involved directly with the performance of the work. They typically work as an hourly employee just like the rest of the field crew, but they have a higher pay and more responsibility. The general foreman reports directly to the superintendent. They're in charge of bringing the project to life on a moment-to-moment -moment level. These foremen oversee all other trade-specific foremen, which we'll cover shortly, along with all other workers on site. They're in charge of making sure everyone shows up on time, is working safely, and performing what they should be. General foremen make sure the crews have what they need to do the work, and if they don't, they make sure they get it as quickly as possible. As such, general foremen coordinate the materials needed, tools required, equipment usage, and other logistics, all in accordance with the schedule. They work closely with the trade foremen to make sure they have what they need, whatever it is. General foremen are some of the first to know about an issue, surprise, or change because they're actually located where the work is happening and can be there in person. They're the go-to person on site when something is needed quickly. General foremen on construction sites usually have at least 15 years of experience, with many of them being a trade-specific foreman already. For the most part, a field engineer is an entry-level position in the construction industry. While they're referred to as an engineer, this doesn't translate to the occupation of engineering, although it can. This position is essentially the eyes and ears from the management team in the field, including the superintendent. They work alongside the field crew, but in a managerial way, rather than performing hands-on work. Here are a few examples of what a field engineer is typically responsible for. They track daily productivity of the crews and compare it to the rate in the budget and schedule. They produce basic reports and status updates for the rest of the project team. They take progress pictures and note daily activities. They order and coordinate the delivery of materials, equipment, and supplies as needed, again, alongside the foreman. They may also take basic measurements, do some rough surveying, make sketches, and take notes. But most importantly, they'll do whatever anyone above them tells them to do. Believe me, I've been there. Field engineers aren't paid as well as executives or managers, but they gain vital experience that provides a solid foundation of construction knowledge as they advance in their careers. And last but certainly not least, we have the trade foreman. As you may imagine, a trade foreman is a foreman that's in charge of a crew performing a specific task or trade. Also known as a gang foreman or working foreman, the trade foreman is a worker with at least four to five years experience performing a specific type of work, such as brick laying, carpentry, or iron work. Due to this, they're very much involved in the moment-by-moment -moment details of that specific type of work on site, making sure the actual construction happens correctly in real time and raising any concerns as soon as they arise. On a large project, such as a commercial building, you'll find several different trade foremen, each with their own responsibilities and unique qualifications. And that wraps up our discussion on the nine key managerial positions that are typically found on a construction project. I hope this video has been helpful and that we've covered this topic in the level of detail you came here for. For more content like this, be sure to like and subscribe to stay in touch. You can also head over to our website at solvepmproblems.com for tons of free articles, downloads, and more. Simply click the link in the description below. Until next time, this is PM Problems, signing off.